The following presentation was recorded at the 2011 Southeast Linux Fest in Spartanburg, South Carolina. It is licensed under a Creative Commons license. For more information about the Southeast Linux Fest, visit www.southeastlinuxfest.org. The Southeast Linux Fest would like to thank the following diamond and platinum sponsors in 2011 for helping make these videos possible. All right, well, thanks y'all for coming. Uh, I am Nikolai Burton. I run the Charleston Drip User Group in South Carolina. And I just wanted to do a, a little overview of Civi CRM. Rather than slides, I'm going to do more of a walkthrough and talk about what Civi can do for you, either as a nonprofit, if you're working for one, or if you're an implementer and you know, you're, you're already doing Drupal sites and you want to try to put CRM in there. And there's not really any great, you know, the Drupal CRM project didn't quite work out. And um, the sugar isn't really a good fit for nonprofits. And then the other software is just tends to be ridiculously expensive or not very useful in terms of, of CRM systems. So Civi's really awesome. It's been around a few years. Um, and it works both in Drupal and in Joomla. And there's a little grassroots thing. They're trying to, to actually fund it for WordPress as well. So you can, once you learn this, you can kind of take it to eventually any of the big CMSs. Um, Civi CRM is CRM for the civic sector. Um, this is not something you want to consider if you're looking at it for like a sales organization. It's very nonprofit driven. Um, Civi lets you manage contributions, uh, memberships. We can do special events like fundraising events uh, where you need to sell registrations and maybe give out swag because uh, we can do premiums. We can do different event levels. Um, it works for grant management. Uh, not on the application side, but if you're an organization that is a granting organization, uh, like a United Way kind of thing, where you're pooling other people's money and giving it out. Um, it can handle pledges with pledge reminders on a regular basis, automated. And we can do case management for some of the humanitarian and, and um, you know, the organizations that are dealing with uh, casework, like uh, homeless shelters, uh, you know, domestic abuse centers, that kind of thing. Um, and one of the other cool things is it's got built-in email marketing. Um, I mean, you can do the whole MailChimp thing or, or work with another source for it, and it's got a little bit of push and pull into some of the, these different systems. But their email marketing is pretty solid on its own. We've got open tracking, click tracking, anything that you can get from the professional um, software suites. Um, so I'm just going to run through, like just kind of start going through some of the screens and show you basically what, what we're looking at with Civi. And I will start by getting some response from my mouse. There we go. Maybe. All right, so with contacts, you can do multiple types. This one's, the sample data is geared a little more towards the school. Um, I've got my students, parents, and staff. So definitely does from your question earlier about universities, you can do it for that. Works quite well. Um, I'm feeling a little slow here. I'm not even on the Wi-Fi. <laughs> Sorry, y'all, I don't know what's up here. Let's just restart Firefox.
I apologize, just bear with me. It's been working fine all morning, so I don't know what's up here. All right, well, while it's doing its thing, um, one of the other really cool things about Civi is we can create custom fields on any of our object types. Our main object types are contacts, memberships, events, uh, participants for those events. Uh, and so for any of those, you can have an unlimited number of custom fields. So for example, it doesn't have like a volunteer management thing out of the box. So what we can do is create a custom field group and we'll call it volunteer info. And then we can maybe set availability with some date fields. We can set their preferences with a series of checkboxes. And all of this kind of stuff, they can manage themselves like your, your users are, uh, can because Civi users will sync with Drupal users. Or Civi contacts, I should say, will sync with Drupal users. And it's got an actual, a, a really cool feature on here too where when we create relationships with folks, um, you know, spouses or parents and children or, or whatever kind of setup there, uh, one of the people, if you allow it, can edit the other person's information. So like a head of household can keep everybody's info up to date. Um, and we've got address sharing, so you only have to enter an address once, and when it changes, you don't have to try to remember everyone else who's at that address. You just share it out, change it one time, and then you're all set. We'll try to launch him again. Um, I had mentioned unlimited contact types. And, and there's, there's sort of three levels of things we can do. We have contact types, which sort of define a person and which fields are available for that person. And then we have tags and groups. Uh, groups are usually used either for querying on folks. We can create a smart group that says, I want everyone whose membership is going to expire in the next 30 days, because uh, I'm going to do an export and go ahead and send them membership reminders or give them to a volunteer to start calling folks. And then we have tags, which are, I think of tags as what this person is to your organization. Um, are they a volunteer? Are they a board member? Um, are they a potential major donor, a prospect kind of situation? And every one of these things I'm mentioning is queryable. It's got a nice front end query UI. Only none of it wants to load, you know? For simplicity, I might skip off of my VM for the moment and just show you a live Civi site. I wasn't sure how good the Wi-Fi was going to be, so. I'm just going to do a basic search for myself here. And we'll run through kind of what the records look like and what we can do with them. So we've got um, a nice little summary. We get all the main stuff easily clickable. Um, different kinds of addresses. You can do unlimited addresses, unlimited phone numbers, emails, websites, any of that kind of stuff. You're not trapped. like. Some of these systems will hard code you into one or two of these different types, which really gets annoying after a while, um, especially when you deal with a lot of donors who move a lot. Yes? Uh, the question was, can you do bulk imports? Absolutely. We've got a, an import tool in here. Um, so you can do conversions from other systems, or just if you're getting maybe mailing results or you're buying donor lists or things like that, absolutely. And we map the fields in the CSV file to what we've got in the system here. So you're not as tied down in having the, the actual CSV file itself be perfect. Um, you're going to choose which column goes to which. So I'm going to run through like a, a back office contribution. Because anything you can do through the public site, you can do as a user. Because a lot of these places have development offices or membership offices where they're getting a lot of stuff in the mail. And you've got you know, 
some volunteer, some kid who's just opening up envelopes, writing down the check, moving on to the next one, and letting the system take care of acknowledgement and everything like that. So from the back side, we've got contribution types, which are unlimited. I created a couple of basic ones. Um, if you're familiar much with nonprofit accounting, um, contribution types always tie to like a GL account number. So think of them maybe as funds. You might, um, I've gone pretty basic here, but you might have gen general fund, annual fund, special restricted funds that are used for projects or building, that kind of thing. Um, we do sources. I do that at my organization with contribution sources so you can actually find out later what was effective. Um, that queryability is there, so. Um, we just, you know, if we spent a bunch of money sending out a direct mailing, did it work? Did it matter? Um, did anyone come or give us money? And for any contributions we do here, you can either wait, send out the paper acknowledgements, or we can go ahead and send email receipts right away to the people, which is pretty cool. Um, for contributions, it's kind of set here. You'll notice that I don't have much of an ability on what I can put in my message. Um, so we've got message templates for all this kind of thing. And then for some of the other options like membership uh, receipts, you can send a little personal note that comes with their contribution receipt. Yes? Um, I'm sure this is probably pretty flexible, but um, is there any like, um, type of FEC reporting of like, uh, political campaigns or whatnot where we generate uh, like semi-automatic reports? Or is that... Um, it has a reporting wing. There's, there's not like a great report builder in there. Um, we've got a search builder where you, pick, you can pick your filters and your fields. Um, Yep, you, you can export any of your client list to CSV and choose what fields you want to export. Oh, sorry. <laughs> the question was, can you export to CSV? So yes, um, just like we can import anything on the major kind of object types, you can export it all. And there, there is like a basic reporting system that's kind of getting there. Um, but it's definitely, you'll, you'll be writing the PHP for it. It provides a template for you. And you, you, just, you write in PHP what your criteria are, what your columns are. Um, Pretty much the whole thing. It's almost like you're working in like a crystal or a or a BERT reports or that kind of thing um, at the level that you're having to write the report yourself. Um, they do have, if you're on the political side of things, they've got uh, a canvassing module, which I haven't worked much with, like a get out the vote kind of thing, uh, where we can create lists to hand people so they can go out door to door and then report back. Um, that was originally what the system was designed for. It was meant to be um, political campaigns, or like, I shouldn't say political campaigns, like political activism campaigns. Um, I want to go ahead and show you some of our profile ability. So another cool thing with the, with the self-service, self-service is all based on profiles. And profiles are lists of fields that you want to expose to your users that they can enter on their own. So I'm going to go to my account. And when we set up a profile, you can say where you want it to show. So we can create blocks. You can actually ex um, grab an HTML snippet. And you can put the profile on somebody's static HTML site. You don't have to use Drupal um, to be able to take advantage of a lot of the functionality of CIVA CRM. So I'm not a great themer, but I'll go ahead and edit my profile here. And my profile was just what I called that set of fields. And I can do things like set what the person can just see versus what they can edit. Um, notice I've got this newsletter option. I had mentioned groups. One of the ways for, that we can use groups is for querying, and the other way is for mailing. Um, so people opt in and opt out. Uh, you can opt them in, and then on, um, for legal reasons, every email newsletter forces you to put an opt-out token in it. Um, so it, it kind of drives you towards best practices for email marketing. And then the stuff at the bottom is a series of custom fields that we did for volunteering to just gauge people's interest and then pull that list, email them to find out you know, when they want to work with us. Yes, what's the question? Um, the question was for email opt-outs. Is that all handled through Civi? And yes, it is. I can go. I can either 
opt out a person on my own, or they can go to their record and, I mean, they can click on their link in the email and that will opt them out. Um, so it works, again, back office or front office. We've got options to do, um, you know, don't, do not phone, do not email, do not contact me at all, um, and keep me out of all bulk mailings. Yes? There's not a whole lot on the Drupal site about it, and I think that's, I'm sorry, the question was, uh, is there any documentation about Civi? And there is, it's out there. You won't find it really on drupal.org. Uh, CiviCRM.org is the main place to go. Um, they have forums and they, they have a regular blog post so that you can see the cool new stuff they're doing. Um, and there is a full-on user guide. It's, it's weak in places. like. I'll definitely tell you that straight up. Um, sometimes you have to like, kind of bang around on it and, until you get lucky or get onto the forums or IRC to get help with certain things. But, uh, <laughs> but the documentation is improving. They, they have written a, a brief user guide. It's on um, flossmanuals.net. Um, that's a website dedicated to user guides for open source software, and there is a, a Civi guide on there. Uh, it doesn't get into some of the specifics or some of the more arcane things you have to do, like there, there's some magic in Voodoo to views integration. It's not just flip it on and go. There's a bunch of modifying files. Uh, so what should I show you? Did you wanna, do you want me to run through maybe a sample mailing? Because I imagine that's something that every organization is going to use. So I'd mentioned groups. I'm just going to include admins for now. And Civi is compatible. There's 3.4, which is for uh, Drupal 6, and 4.0 for Drupal 7. So it is already available for 7. I mentioned you can do click tracking, open tracking. It can also, if you send it out from a certain address and they reply, we can log that on their record as an activity automatically. So more if you're if your goal is to get them to actually do something from the email versus just read it, we can go ahead and log that without extra manual work. Yes? What about the partitioning system? Is there any type of functionality like that built in? The question was, uh, does it have partitioning ability? I've seen a Drupal module called Petition. Uh, I don't know how up to date that is, but there is some limited functionality in here for this. And just recently, like within the last three or four weeks, um, Drupal or uh, Civi has added web form integration. So now if you want to do your petition as a web form, like the Drupal web forms, uh, you can tie those submissions to automatically create new contacts or match existing contacts if those people are logged in using their Drupal, Drupal account. Um, and that data is going to automatically push and pull for you. So while there's not that I know of like a, a dedicated petition module, I think with this new integration, it's going to work great for that. So for their mailing, um, whatever you're more familiar with or whatever your users like, we can do a straight up HTML upload. Um, create your template, put your tokens in place, um, or you can do it on screen. And it's kind of like a mail merge. We can just hit insert token and where did my tokens go? Oh, there it goes. So pretty much any contact field we can throw into mailings without having to do an export and a mail merge in an external system. And this lets you, for the mailing, we can do preset headers and footers. What I like to do for folks is put those required opt-out links, unsubscribe links in the footer so they don't have to rewrite it every time they're writing a new message. Um, just create an HTML snippet and stick it in there at the bottom. And mailing can be queued, which is kind of cool, because um, a lot of these nonprofits aren't paying for big SMTP servers or a lot of throughput. Like, for example, you know, Google Apps for your domain limits you to 200 emails an hour. 
And if you've got a 5,000 person mailing list, everyone from number 201 to 5,000 is going to bounce and just destroy your inbox. Uh, so Civi has a, a queuing mechanism. So what we can do is uh, mailing runs on cron. So say every half hour, I'm going to run 75. And it'll just batch those 75 in a row until it reaches the end. So that way you can spread that mailing out over a few hours and not worry about hitting any limits and getting a lot of bounces back, which is pretty awesome. And I haven't seen many of the other systems that, like many of the other like downloadable, you know, installable email marketing apps that can do that. Um, I know, I'm no like constant contact and MailChimp does, but that's, you know, a paid service versus something that we've got built into this program. And you can schedule them ahead of time, which is pretty cool. Um, if you're dealing with different, like, I don't know, if, if you want to send it out at a cer exact certain time of day, maybe for, for some kind of political reason, maybe you know there's going to be like a, a presidential or a governor's speech at 10 AM, and you want to have this thing all ready to go because you know what they're going to say. And so you send that out. You know, As soon as they're done, call your senator and, and send out that call to action immediately after something like that. Uh, questions about mailing? I was going to go ahead and just maybe pop into some other modules or other sections in here. No? All right. So special events are cool. I need to get them from in here, though, because this is where I have them all set up. Er. Try it with Chrome. Um, so special fundraising events, we can allow the folks to go online and register one or more people. Um, you can set limits on that kind of thing. They can choose different levels of event registration. Think of like um, if you're going to run some kind of conference or something like that, you've got your basic level. If you want to throw in lunch, you want to throw in you know, t-shirts, that kind of thing, um, and different add-ons. So we've got different levels there. We've got pay later versus having to pay right now, which is, I don't see that used much. I think that might be more of a UK thing. Generally, uh, the nonprofits I work with want your money right away. Um, there are about 12. You can use authorized. Oh, sorry, what's the processor for payments? Um, Authorize.net, Elevon, PayPal, Payplo, Payflow Pro. Um, there's some, a few country-specific ones. And if there's not already a processor, it's not too difficult to write your own. Um, processor integration is, is pretty straightforward. All right, I'm Drupal guy, but I'm not Linux guy. Is there like a task manager equivalent where I can just kill Firefox so it stops? <laughs> yeah, I'd have to do it for the command prompt. I can't do it in the GUI. Gotcha. This guy doesn't even want to go in there, does he? This is acting like a VM problem more than a... It probably is, yeah. I was just going to try to run it in Chromium instead. Mm -hmm. 
Titans, they should both be dead. All right, it is a VM thing, isn't it? All right, I'll go to Vince on here. I, I wanted to have some already set up for you to show off, but event management is generally, it always sounds like an easy thing until you start talking to the folks organizing the event because now we want to track vendors and we want to um, have different levels of recognition and sponsorship and we want to allow people to pledge at the event, maybe at some kind of gala. And one of the things we can do here with the, the views integration is do participant listings. So if you want, a lot of folks that come to the more of these high profile events, they come because they want to be seen and they want people to know they're there, uh, as opposed to it being an anonymous thing. So we can create participant lists with views and display that either like as a block or a page somewhere on the Drupal site. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that on. I'm going to set our event to be next Saturday. I can only hold 50 people. The we've got Google Map integration on here. It's not that great, so I'm not going to show it. <laughs> but just going through some of these screens, you can see it's, it's a pretty easy system to use. It, it takes a little time to set up, but there's nothing really crazy about actually day-to-day -day usage and, and training. You can probably get away with giving folks, you know, a half day of training and they can pretty much take it and run with it from that. Yes? Um, The question is, can we do like ROI tracking on things other than email? And we absolutely can. That's why we have, um, we have activities. So what, what I would do is you send out a direct mailing and then based on responses to that, um, either have people enter it as an activity directly or put it into a big CSV file and import it all at once. Um, and then we can do some queries on that. So I wanted to show this, which not many folks are doing. Um, when I worked at Blackbaud, which makes like the Cadillac for nonprofit fundraising, they were just now getting into this, and these guys have had it for a year or more. Uh, we've got tell a friend features. So at the end of you making a donation or an event or a membership, we can turn on the tell a friend where that person can enter, you know, a couple of email addresses, and it will forward the thing on with the link, and then we're actually able to follow that back to see if that was effective too. So the telefriend thing is, it's nothing like super amazing, but there aren't many systems that are doing it right now. It's, it's still kind of new to this sector. You've seen it in the, in the sales kind of area a long time, but nonprofits are finally getting it. Uh, other cool features. I want to show you our search builder. ours, like I, whatever. <laughs> it's search field builder. So this is what I was saying for our, our nice front end query. Um, so I'm going to pull all of my individuals who are not deceased. And this, this stuff on the end is a little kludgy. We don't have drop downs yet. Um, for like multi-selects or things like that, you, you kind of have to know what your operators are, but it tends to just follow the, the, this just writes it into PHP, so however you'd write it that way. And you see we can do unlimited fields with it. So I want people who are not, do not phone. And are not dead, and I can look for them and Go ahead and maybe set that to 
to do some kind of phonathon. All right. I don't always remember the arcane entries that we have to put here. There we go. So now I've got my phonathon list. It's returned, you know, 400 records. So I'm going to grab them all. And just from here, I don't have to browse around and do a lot more stuff. I can go ahead and just export these folks from here. Um, or if it's not a phonathon, I can go ahead and get mailing labels created. There's a mailing label template. It's one of the standard Avery's. And just print it out right away, stick them on little postcards, and send those out. Uh, and Search Builder works on any of the major object types, again, participants, events, contacts, um, memberships. And this is where you were saying you can export it all to CSV? Yeah, to do an ex oh, sorry, the question was this is where you do the export. So yes, um, anytime you want to do an export, you do some kind of search, either a normal search, they've got an advanced search with that tries to present a lot of different fields to you. This is basically everything from every one of our tabs on a person's record, uh, including custom fields. You don't have to do anything special there. It just gets added. You decide whether or not you want it to show when you do custom fields, whether you want them searchable. Um, sure. Um, the question is, I'm not sure I get it. Are, are you thinking of like auto merging and like deduping that kind of yeah, thing? I mean, basically making sure that every time you contact this person, let's say your goal is to contact them, call them four times in mm -hmm. a year and mail them twice, that's all going to be generated whenever you send these emails and whenever you um, go through this process here. Okay, so the question was um, around what what kind of stuff we're, we're tracking in here when something like this happens, like we do an export or the mailing. Um, so yes, you, you can get all of that for activities. When we do an export, you can choose to go ahead and log that to someone's record as a mailing, for example. So if I wanted to grab, yeah, I'll just run through another quick search here and go into an export so we can see that. We can actually, if we don't even want to do an export, record activity for contacts. And go. And we can say that we called all those people. So there's your. So there's, grab all those people, throw my, my contact, or throw my activity on there. Um, let's see if this guy's recovered. Because I really wanted to show you um, the, the uh, rules integration, which is also pretty new. No, he's not. <laughs> uh, well, the idea, of, I'll just go ahead and I, I feel really bad, you guys, that my VM has decided to blow up right before the session. Um, the rules integration is very cool. We can do on a Civi CRM contact being created, updated, deleted, or even viewed, we can trigger a rule. Um, so those are, those are our conditions. So whenever 
I don't know, a, a new contact is created that also has um, a certain level of donations as, um, associated with it or something like that, we can send an email to let the boss know. Um, I guess a more useful example is if somebody tried to edit a client who's a board member, um, I'd want to make sure I'm aware that that's happening so they're not putting any bad information in there. Uh, so it's, you, can, you can kind of set up basic workflows with that. Uh, you can do that with any of the, the object types, I believe, as well, um, including recently mailing. Uh, the big use case was my folks who create my list of, of uh, recipients for the mailing is different from my folks who actually design it and create, you know, craft the message, create the HTML template, all of that. So we could do a workflow where once the person finishes with their design, we trigger a rule that assigns the mailing to someone else or, or moves it around to let them know, like with a notification that it's time for them to go ahead and add the, the recipients to it. And then we can trigger another rule that says, all right, now it's been approved, we can go ahead and add it to the mailing queue. Uh, so we've got, you know, again, these are, these are all pretty recent developments, um, which is why I don't have them on my main site, just on our demo. But the, the web form rules and views integration make this a, a really powerful module without you having to write a lot of code. I would mentioned kind of before the session started, I've, I've never written any code to customize Civi because all these newer modules keep coming out and they're, they're just really powerful integrations that let someone who's not uber techy be able to go ahead and, and do some really advanced features. So. That's kind of my walkthrough. I, oh, we're there, oh my gosh. All right, before it goes away. So I wanted to show you the front end of an event registration, because everything we've seen so far was back end, really nothing on the public pages. And all you have to do to make these pages live, when you create an event or you create a membership or a contribution page, they're all based on you creating a page through running through their little wizard. Um, they give you a link, and then you just throw that link into your, you know, on your site, wherever you want it. You know, it's probably going to be something in your primary menu or a link to it from a page somewhere. Oh, come on, Smalls. All right. Yeah, I think the VM's host. Well, um, I think, does this go to 11? Is that right? How, wait, how long does the session go? Like, I wanted to see if there are any other just general questions. Oh, okay, so plenty of time, all right. While this tries to load, um, I, I did run, like I ran through most of the big things that it's done, or that it has, um, but yeah, I wanted to see what you guys have. Well, I'm just curious, um, as far as the Drupal integration for Civi, mm -hmm. you talked about profiles, um, views, rules, um, is, is there And now web form. I'm sorry? Web form is the newest. Oh, web form, okay. Yep. Um, so that's the four key points where it, where it plays in. Mm-hmm. Uh, nope, this is, the live site right now is sitting on okay, that one. This, this website right here, yeah. So if I show my membership page, this is going to show a Civi. If we look up here, you'll notice my URL is going to change. Uh, and you can't really do pretty URLs with Civi, which kind of sucks. Um, you can set up the, using the path module, or the path redirect module, um, you can give it a pretty path for just the menu item. Yeah, just so the end user sees that first, but then it's still going to push them to one of these Civi URLs. And so I'm looking on a membership page, and it actually recognizes, based on me being logged in, that I'm already a member, and I may want to do a renewal versus some kind of, you know, versus a new membership. Maybe I don't know what my old level was. And this was a profile that we just threw in at the bottom. It's got three basic fields. We wanted to collect the minimum of information to, that we would need to actually process a membership uh, while still not putting people off to, to wanting to give us money. Uh, 
So there's nothing worse than getting those screens where, you, where they ask you for like 20 pieces of information and you're trying to give them a donation. Other questions about Civi or touch points with Drupal, anything like that? Well, when you set it up with the Drupal integration, what if, can you show the settings maybe on the Drupal side? What it looks like? Because I figure there's some settings, you, or do you just turn the module on and it pretty much is? The question was um, what kind of setup do you do on the Drupal side when you're integrating with these things? Uh, views requires uh, editing a couple of pages for views integration. Um, just because Views doesn't know automatically where Civi is, unless you're putting them in the same database, uh, which generally is not best practice to, to put your CRM and CMS together. Um, but most of the others, you just turn on the module, and if I go to the web form integration, I create a new web form, and I've got my little edit, submissions, table, and now I've got a Civi CRM tab at the top for it, too. They are rocking out. Um, and for these profiles, I'll show you the profiles from this side, because you choose where you want them to show up. Customize. All right, so if we look at this one right here, you can choose specific Drupal places. Just pick from a couple of checkboxes here. So I want it to be on my registration form or the My Account form. Or if it's, and then you're always going to check profile because you might want to export it somewhere else. And I had mentioned, which I want to show you, you can put this anywhere. So HTML mm -hmm. form snippet, go here. And I can just copy and paste that into any website anywhere. And it's going to save into my Civi um, database, because there's an API that it all runs through. Uh, you can just do like basic uh, REST API. So uh, There's other little widgets and cool things in here. We've got like um, campaign goals, where you can set, you know, set a $10,000 fundraising goal and watch the little thermometer get closer, and do fun little stuff like that. But that's pretty much Civi, as much as you can get to it in an hour with a half-busted VM. Oh, this guy finally got there. Uh, oh, I did not mention team fundraising. Um, think of, you've probably all either been in one or had a friend who's done team and training. Those, uh, like the cancer walks and things like that, where it's helped me reach my goal of X number of dollars versus donate to the overall campaign. Um, so we've got that ability here. It, you, can, you can allow folks to create their own campaign pages, give it their own messaging, their own images kind of thing. And then they're working towards personal or team goals, which is another thing that you don't see many of the CRM systems doing yet. Um, some of the higher end ones have it. But in terms of free ones, I think this is the only one. And I don't know any of the, like, the, the lower tier proprietary CRMs that are doing that yet. Any other? Oh, y'all are good. <laughs> Any other questions? No. All right. Well, that's uh, that's Civi. So, thanks, y'all. And if I can wrangle this VM, if you just want to come around and ask questions or have me like demo a piece to you personally, I'm glad to. Um, I'm going to kill this thing afterwards and see what happens. So. What about this? I can help with like it. We have the same problem. What would happen if you did this? Like you gave me a I good found idea. Problem. How do you do that? that? It's like this. Well, I disagree. Who would have thought of that? Let's put the word out.
An OS that works the way that you do. Across all your devices. HP Slate and WebOS. HP. As a service leader in cloud computing, all we do is hosted computing. To us, the cloud is just the next generation of hosting. And as someone who's been in the hosting industry for 12 years, we feel we're in a unique position to really help bring these two worlds together, these different sets of technologies, and to help companies embrace this new world and this great new tool that allows faster innovation. Not only is it about us being responsive and accountable, but it's about us doing more for you.